Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, also for the possibility to be here and to speak to you, I have um, the task to bring you back a little bit from specific project, but more to the broader facts and figures and what is happening on the world, and also a little bit to go into it, why it, or what might be the reasons behind it. Um, so migration to Germany, crisis or normality, um, normality that is uh, the question what we, um, what I tried to discuss a little bit with you to, for today. Um, the crisis, uh, what you can see here are the number of arrivals and the number of asylum applications in Germany from 2014 to 2016. And uh, the darker bars, um, these are the arrivals uh, measured as a registration in the ESA system. Um, and you can see that the, there was actually a very um, a big increase in the registration in the easy system. Actually, it um, almost tripled in only six months, or only in the um, months of uh, November in 2015, there came um, as much asylum seekers, actually, um, as in the rural year 2014. So um, this is what we here in Germany actually lived or considered as a crisis that happened. What we can also see is that the numbers um, really decreased again by the end of the year 2015. Um, what has to do actually with the political situation, how we manage borders and how we manage the entry into Europe and into Germany, but not so much um, because the number of people who who search for some asylum, for some um, support in Europe, declined. If we have a little bit open our view and we see the development and for the whole EU and the other European countries, um, the blue line is the whole um, EU, the red one is Germany. And now we're really looking at the asylum applications. So not the moment when the people arrive in one country, but the moment when they can apply for asylum. Um, and actually in almost all countries there was this, this is the little hill um, in the summer, for the summer 2015. But the number of asylum applications in Germany is extraordinarily high, even in, in comparison with other countries. So um, Germany is for so far the, one of the European countries with uh, the, yeah, who actually has one of the main burden if it comes to asylum application, not really if we talk about um, the entry of people who are looking for some support, then we have to look more for the southern countries in Europe. Who is coming? Who is there? Um, this, um, for the year 2015, where we still are, where the most of the people came here. Um, the, or let's talk about um, some of the numbers first. We heard already about um, that uh, before in, in the last panel, some of the, of the numbers, how many people came actually to Germany. The truth is that nobody knows how many came here. So what I can show you here is just the registration um, and the asylum application numbers. So that is what the system can, um, can register. But um, inside these numbers, there are a lot of people who were count double. There are a lot of people who were even not count, the people who were count but then leave the country again to other countries because maybe they were registered in Germany but their families in Sweden and they just left the countries without being um, uh, registered. But uh, just experts assume that only in the year 2015 there were about 800,000 people who um, came as Reach uh, few sheets to Germany. So that is more or less the number. Um, you can see here the bars are a little bit um, higher, but this is because of this very difficult statistical situation we actually still have in Germany. We still do not know how many people, how many people we have to count for. Um, so the biggest country of origin is um, 
not very surprising, Syria and Afghanistan and Iraq. So these are the countries where everybody knows about there is a lot of a very difficult situation, the country of wars, country of civil conflicts. And um, most people um, who reach or arrive in Germany or in Europe, they come from these, these countries. But uh, these are not the only group of migrants that come here. There are only, uh, also other ones. So Albania or Kosovo, we, we heard or had that problem. It's not anymore there because it's, for that people it's almost impossible to, to get into Germany um, since we have some of walls again in Europe. Um, but we have also, or there's a, a group of, of migrants coming here, they are from countries. We do not have them so much on our mental map as countries of war, but more as countries of, of poverty and, and big problems. And these are the African, the sub-Saharan African countries. And um, maybe you have heard or noticed in, um, in the news that um, our uh, Chancellor Merkel is right now in northern African countries talking about how to manage this migration crisis. There's a lot of their talking about migrants coming from sub, um, southern African countries. And um, one reason why this, I want to talk about these countries right now is about is the demographic factor. Um, we have right now living around seven billion people in the whole world. Um, just 100 years ago, um, there were quite less. So world population has tripled actually uh, since the last 100 years, and it's still growing. The the only thing what, what changed is um, before the population growth was just almost in every country of the world, but now we can find it mainly in the sub-Saharan African countries. Uh, there are around one billion people living right now in sub-Saharan um, African countries. Only in 2050 it will be 200, uh, 2 uh, billion, and at the end of the century it could be already 3 billion. So these countries, are, they have such high fertility rates and such high life expectancy that um, that will be difficult to change. This is something what already is happening. And um, we know a little bit about this country. We know about the problems they already have. And uh, for a lot of them, of the, a lot of the people living there, migration is the only possibility to survive. So knowing this demographic factor and what is coming in, there's also the theory of uh, the youth bulge, so a society with a very high percentage of young adult men especially, is more likely to um, live violent conflicts than, than other societies. Um, it's not so, so surprising that um, especially the sub-Saharan African countries are more likely to, yeah, to live some, some uh, to experience some kind of violence, and of the World Fragile State Index, they have one of the highest rates. Even so, for these people, migration is is really one kind of of making a life. Um, it's not that they all that they are all coming just to Europe. I know this is a little bit difficult to. Um, to, to read, but this green one, this is Europe. This is Africa, North America, Latin America, and this is a different Asia, uh, well, this is uh, um, the former the Soviet Union, and these are Asian regions. And um, the, these bars or lines are showing um, where are people from this region going to. So from Latin America, there are huge percentages going to Europe, but the most of them are of course, we know it's going to North America. In Asia, we have a lot of the migration just into Asia, so between different um, regions in Asia. And for Africa, most of the uh, migration is the inner African migration. Um, the percentage coming to Europe is, is uh, well, it's rising uh, or increasing, but it's uh, well, only one part of the migrants from there. Um, 
These are all African migrants for different years and um, distinguished by the destination of the region where they're going to. And again, the, the brown bar is the inner African migration, what has for the last 20, 25 years the biggest share of the whole migration. But the orange bar is the, um, the migration to Europe. And at, what we can see, there is an increase. And this increase, well, it doesn't stop, it's still, it's still going on. I told you about before in the, one of the first slides um, that Germany actually has received a, a very big part of the, of the refugees coming to Europe. Um, but if we, look, if we have this, uh, the, wider, the wider focus on it, if we look worldwide, we can see that uh, actually most of the refugees are not coming to Europe. They're staying in the countries nearby their home countries. And there's is a lot of sub-Saharan African countries like the Sudan is hosting more than um, 3.5 million uh, refugees. We know also about, I'm almost finished. Um, we, we know also about um, Turkey where more, more or almost 3 million uh, refugees are living, mostly from Syria. So I, what I want to bring back this whole figures and, and this whole picture back to Germany. Here you can see the population development in Germany for, since um, 1970. And uh, this, the darker bars is a natural population change. So just so how many people are, um, are born and how many people died and then this, um, the, the sum of it. And it, it's, it's negative. Since 1970, it's negative. So if we only take the natural population development in Germany, we are a shrinking population since decades. And it's only because of migration that um, we are not the old, well, we are not, <laughs> we are the oldest country actually, or one of the oldest countries in the world, but it could be even worse um, without the migration. And what we can also see with this um, yellowish bars is um, that migration never has been one stable thing, what, what happens, so that every year there are like 1,000 people coming in. So there was almost some, um, some hypes or some, some things happening in the world what lead people to come to Germany or more people to come to Germany than in other times. And we heard this already from in the last panel from Frank Ward. We are a society with a big share of these people with migration background. And especially, you see this is a, a population pyramid and on the one side there are the native, on the other side there are the migrants, people with uh, migration backgrounds. And especially if we're going here down to the um, younger age groups, um, it's around one third for whole Germany um, who has already a migration background. And we know that in big cities the share is much higher than of course in rural regions. What can we do? What experience do we have with, with integration with that people? There's no time to really go far into it. It's only we heard already, well, always we are talking about it. We have to do that, this, this, and there's not enough time to do it. But maybe, but still, actually we know what, the, what does it need for integration. It needs education, it needs labor and participation, but I haven't heard so far, maybe in the morning you had talk about already on it, about it. So here there's an employment rate for, 20, uh, for yeah, the typical age for, for, um, for the labor force. And um, for native immigrants and the immigrants in the last five years, but these are data from 2010, so before the, so the, the um, crisis. The people coming from, to, uh, from 2005 to 2010 who actually are considered in this bars are these high qualified inner European migrants. They came because of all the crises and the finance crisis in the EU. Um, so they are, they are really high qualified mostly. And even they have a much lower employment rate um, than others, than the native or immigrants who are here for, for longer. And among them, the non, uh, those who do not have any um, uh, EU citizenship, the employment rate is even less. 
And uh, if you look at the um, educational attainments, of course, those who have not even a vocational qualification, these people, um, the employment rate is, is less. And it is um, even, even for migrants, it's, it's looking um, worse. But we have also this high qualified migrants. And even among them, the employment rate among immigrants is much lower than among um, native. And these are the figures we have to consider. This is the experience we are coming from. And if you want to talk about integration of the people who are now, this is also what we have to consider. What, what have you learned already from these kind of figures? So thank you very much. <laughs>